did everything. All right, guys, we're back in Solo Learn, the CSS fundamentals, gradients, and backgrounds. I apologize if I stumble through these next two sections, but I, I do know that I need to improve my CSS, which is why we're doing this course. So let's go ahead and move forward. Linear gradients kind of refers to uh, backgrounds going uh, linearly from one color to the other. You can see right here is happening. You put in uh, color names, hex values, HGB or HSL, uh, basically different colors. As you can see right right here, background. Uh, if you're using Moz, you're going to have to use, uh, or Mozilla, you're going to have to use different things. In this case, we're passing in two different colors. Uh, by name, you can pass them in anywhere. You have linear and then you have radial. Uh, hexadecimal, oh, CMYK, there we go. Whatever CMYK is, if that's a color scheme, I apologize, I didn't know that. Um, you can do color stops. Uh, this becomes a lot easier to do and uh, quicker using um, a less or SAS of a CSS precompiler as well. So we have a uh, gradient, blue, yellow, green, pink, white. So you can just keep going apparently. And you can set how much. Oh, that's kind of cool. 85% green, 30% yellow, 20% blue. I didn't know that. Uh, add the missing color stop value to create sharp lines between the colors. So uh, that's 20 and 20. I guess this would, 80 and 80, that would be 20%, if I understand that correctly, equal 200% exactly. Whoops. Forgot to turn that off. Uh, so uh, let's continue on. Direction of the gradient. So you can also set a direction. So we've been setting the top to bottom. You see we have left to right and so on and so forth. So which the following direction is supported? Uh, I believe it's probably center. Because you have to go in a direction and center isn't really a direction. It's just the center. You also do bottom left, 100 degrees as well. So you have our backgrounds. It, you get a lot of flexibility is really what you need to take away from this. So if we have linear gradient, left, red, yellow. That would probably be 45 degrees. No. Let's, let's see here. Bottom left. Bottom left is 100 degrees. Okay. So zero degrees, I guess, is left. Okay, so at zero degrees, you're at the left. Bottom left is 100 degrees. Got it. So you can also do repeating linear gradient as so. This is really good for creating like cool backgrounds where maybe text would go on. Uh, make it a little see-through, a gradient as well. Um, so you have a repeating linear gradient. We also have radial gradients, position, shape or size, color stops, uh, color combination. Okay. Uh, so uh, there was no direction included in that. Setting the shapes. So you can see right here, things are getting a little feisty. You have ellipse, which is the default apparently in the circle. So ellipse is the default. Uh, ooh, in percentages, top left. Cool, cool. Uh, what is not acceptable for position? Percent definitely is. Uh, I'm gonna say radian. So yeah, radians you're not gonna use. Color stops. Color stop is specified with a color plus an optional stop position. Here's the length of the percentage. You can see right here where it just stops immediately. So add a circle, radial gradient for this, the black and red colors. We have that already. And color stops at 20 pixels. 
and 70 pixels. Cool. Background dash size. I didn't realize this was uh, new to uh, CSS. CS3. Okay, so now nowadays you uh, don't need to add the browser speci specificity, uh, if, the, if I said that right, uh, to this. So if we want a background of 100 pixels by 200 pixels, oops, I got that backwards. It's uh, width then height, so 200 pixels, 100 pixels. It's just background dash size, like so. Now, there are two other possible background sizes, contain and cover. Contain keyword scales image so that it fits the container. So if you have a 5,000 by 5,000 uh, size background, but you want it to be contained within the div, which is 500 by 500, you'd use the contain, and it will shrink it down appropriately. However, if you want the image to cover the space uh, to fit properly, you can use the word cover. Cool. Background dash clip. Not something I'm familiar with. Specifies the painting area of the background. You have border box, padding box, content box. Interesting. Which value is not used in the background? Dash clip property, border box, content, text box. I think it was text box. So you can kind of add borders now. This is why I take away borders to the paddings and things like that. Yes, it does work with images. Transparent borders. So now your borders can be semi-see-through more or less. I believe is what it's saying. So you see right here, it's now semi-see-through. Uh, background dash. Uh, border box. Using background dash padding box. None. Yeah, I got that wrong. Let's go back and look at this real quick. Background clip padding box. Okay, so that's where I got it wrong. There we go. Multiple background images. Another thing you can do. It's kind of interesting. So you can lay over multiple background images. I didn't know this. Uh, so that's good. Just separate it with a comma and pass in the URL to where everything is. And uh, similar with background position, pass in a comma and it'll go to the right place. That's pretty pretty cool as well. The last image of the background image list will appear at... God, I have no idea. Uh... I guess it'll appear at the bottom if you don't specify it. So you can change the position. We already talked about that. You can also pass it in just using background if you want shorter CSS. Um, I personally prefer having everything broken up into pieces. So that's just me. But I go back and forth about that. So do whatever works best for you. <laughs> Fill in the blanks to add two background images to the element with the first position at the top left corner. So uh, this is going to be URL and uh, for, specify by a comma, uh, left top and the other top right, right top. Cool. And then opacity. And you can see right here we're making things uh, see through now. 
This is pretty cool. You use this a lot for a lot of things. Uh, so if we want to do a pass, we need a point three zero. What did I do wrong? Oh, 0 0.3. There we go. Uh, now, if you're using IE, or commonly known as the shit browser that makes everyone's life difficult as a web developer, uh, you're going to need to use a filter alpha to get the opacity to work. Now, let's see the quiz here. Add a circle radiant gradient to produce red so background radiant no one second all right let's let's see here background so radial gradient and uh color stop so 50 pixels 15 Pixels, 25 pixels. There we go. I think I got those number mixed up. So radial, and then 25, 15, and gradient. I'm not really too worried about uh, memorizing this stuff. Uh, you really need to learn by reference when it comes to. Why is my 25 pixels wrong? Add a circular radial gradient and produce red and blue with color stops according to that 25 pixels and 15 pixels. Oh. Whoops. Radial. Don't, yeah, uh, one thing to when it comes to the coding is don't necessarily worry about memorizing this stuff so much as knowing that it exists and being able to being able to uh, remember, oh, I can do this and going back to it and trying to solve it at a later date. Uh, 15, 25. Like... Yeah, 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 yeah. I swear, I'm, I, all right, so apparently I don't fully understand this. So this is 25, this is 15. All right, so we're gonna use a hint here because I don't understand how I can't, Put a color stop. Let's try this. All right, I need to go back and review that radial gradient color stop issue because I don't, I don't understand why it's 15 and 15. In the background clip property which values allow for the creation of transparent borders you're going to assign the padding box. Fill in the blanks to make the background image of the element 100 by 100 pixels. So we have a background and also set the opacity. Um, so we're, here's our background dash size 100 by 100. Set the opacity to 50%. So we're also going to set the URL to this, or the image to this. And then we're going to set opacity to 0 0.5. Cool. Fill in the blanks to so apply 50% opacity to the div. So it's going to be 0 0.5. And make it also work in IE, a, aka the shit ass browser everybody hates. And there we go. Cool. Um, stumble a little bit on uh, the radial gradient part. Um, Hopefully I'll use that and get more familiar with it. Uh, last but not least, we have transitions and transforms. Lots of cool stuff in here. And another section I plan on stumbling over. Um, but definitely uh, glad to uh, be working on this course. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and share. And support me on patreon.com slash codingtutorials360. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Hey, guys, thanks for watching the video. If you're interested in coding boot camp, check out devmountain.com where housing is included in your price of tuition. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and support me on Patreon. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.